Hi! This week we will perform an experiment on Newton's law of motion. Sir Isaac Newton is a famous English physicist and mathematician. He formulated these three laws which are a basics for classical mechanics. According to Newton's first law of motion, an object remains at rest if there is no net external force acting on it, and it will continue to move with constant velocity if it is initially in motion. The second Newton law states that if there is a net external force acting on an object, the object will accelerate. The direction of acceleration is in the direction of the force and the magnitude is directly proportional to the magnitude of the force and inversely proportional to the mass of the object. Object will move with constant, uniform acceleration if the force and the mass are both constant. The equation that explains this law is F is equal ma where F and A are vectors. The third Newton law talks about the action and reaction. So, for example, if you have a balloon that's filled with air and then you open the side of the balloon, the action force would be an air rushing out and the reaction force is a balloon going up. These two forces are same in magnitude but opposite in direction. Newton formulated these laws in his famous book Principia Mathematica. The purpose of this experiment is to study constant velocity motion, constant acceleration motion and their graphical representations. Then we will apply Newton's second law of motion to find useful information about the forces acting on the system and on the end we will measure both the coefficient of rolling friction and coefficient of sliding friction. Now let's first talk about constant velocity and acceleration. The average velocity of object is given by this equation and it is a change in the position in the time interval. A change in velocity results in average acceleration. If object that moves on a straight line makes equal velocity changes in equal period of time, then it moves with constant uniform acceleration. If the acceleration is constant, then instantaneous acceleration is equal to the average acceleration. These definitions led to the following kinematic equations for constant acceleration. If we go ahead and plot a displacement of object as a function of time, we will get a straight line whose slope will give us a velocity of the object and y-intercept would give us a initial position. If we plot a velocity as a function of time, we will also get a straight line. The slope of this line would be a acceleration. This represents equation 1 here. So the slope would be acceleration and then the y-intercept here would be a initial velocity. Now if you plot this equation, if you plot a position as a function of time here, what do you think this graph would look like? Yes, you're right, it would be a parabola. So a position versus time gives us a parabola for this equation. So the reason we have a parabola here is this quadratic term in equation. So if your object is accelerating and then you're plotting a position of the object as a function of time, you're always, you are always going to get a parabola. During this lab you will learn how to analyze this curve and plot a velocity versus time for this particular data set in order to get the acceleration from here. So now let's talk about system you will use for this experiment. So on your inclined track you're going to have for the object labeled with capital mass M you're going to have either cart or a wooden block 
which is going to be connected by a thread across this pulley with a falling mass m here. So whenever you have a problem like this in physics, you know that you should apply Newton's second law of motion and find all the useful information about the forces acting on the system. But the first step here is to actually draw a free body diagram. So the free body diagram is a diagram that contains all the forces acting on your system. So let's start here first by analyzing all the forces acting on the falling mass. You have a force due to gravitational acceleration, downward always, and then you have a tension force this way. When the system starts moving, the acceleration of falling mass and this big mass M here would be same because these two are connected by a thread. Now falling mass will fall down this way and then this mass will move up to incline. Now let's talk about the forces acting on this big mass M here which would be in your case either a cart or a wooden block. So first you have a force due to gravitational acceleration in this direction. Then you have this normal force here, which is a reaction from the surface to this object. Then you have a tension force in this direction. And you have a friction force that always opposes a motion. We have to decompose this vector, which is a force due to gravitational acceleration to these two vectors. And then if you remember from your vectors lecture, the sum of this vector plus this vector will give you this one. So the angle of inclination is given by theta here. So this angle and this angle are same. So then this vector here would be a mg cosine theta. And then this vector here would be mg sine theta. Now let's go and write the uh, second Newton law equations. Remember that second Newton law states that mass of an object times acceleration of that object is going to be equal to the sum of all forces acting on the object. Now, because this object is moving up to incline, this direction is going to be a positive. The falling mass is falling down, so this direction is going to be positive. So now let's write sum of all forces acting on this object here. We have a tension in positive direction. We have an mg sine theta opposing the motion. And then we have a friction force opposing the motion. So that's the reason we have these negative signs. For the small mass m, falling mass, we have mg in a positive direction, and then we have a tension that's opposing the motion, so we have minus t. And then last equation here states that this normal force vector and this component of the gravitational force vector, they are equal in magnitude, but they are in opposite directions. So we're going to get that n is equal mg cosine theta. By measuring acceleration, masses, and the angle of inclination, we can calculate friction force, we can calculate a normal force, and finally we can calculate a coefficient of friction for the sliding this is a kinetic coefficient of friction for the sliding object and then rolling coefficient of friction for the cart. So the relationship between the friction force and normal force is given by these two equations. Now let's talk about how to calculate a friction force. The easiest way to calculate a friction force is to combine equations 2 and 1. If we go ahead and add equation 1 to the equation 2, we are going to get this. Now grouping terms together and then finally calculating for f, we are going to get that friction force is given by this term. Lastly, we have to calculate a tension. 
The easiest way again to calculate a tension is from the equation 2. You simply solve the equation for t and then you group the terms. Now we will do uh, the actual experiment. This is a setup for this week's experiment. On the table you have an uh, air truck. On the air truck you have a dynamic cart. It should be placed this way. Then you have a wooden block. Here you have some paper clips. You have a masses. 20 grams and 1 10 gram and you have a 5 gram uh, mass hanger. On the air truck you have a photo gate that is recording the motion of this smart pulley and the photo gate is connected to a science workshop which is then connected to a computer which you will use to run this experiment. First you have to measure the mass of the wooden block and the cart. Now we have to level air truck. So put the level on the top and check if the angle is 0, 0.0 degrees. If the truck is not leveled just turn this in or out on front and on the back of the track and make sure that your reading is showing a 0, 0.0 degrees or approximately to that value. Once the track is leveled we will do the first part of experiment. Make sure that the thread goes across the pulley. Add a couple of paper clips to this side of the thread. Now pull the cart all the way back so the front of the cart is at 40 centimeters. Log into the student account from the start menu, choose a fold appropriate folder and experiment number. Now press the start and give the cart a small push. If the graph is a straight line, print it, record the mass of the paper clips on the graph and we can move on to the next part of the experiment. Add a wooden block underneath the front feet of the track. Measure the angle of inclination. Add 30 grams to a mass hanger. Make sure the thread is across the pulley. First we will record all the data and then we will move on to analysis. Pull the cart back. Press start and release the cart and press stop. Now for the wooden block add 50 grams to a mass hanger. Make sure the thread is across the pulley. Turn the wooden block so this felted side is in contact with the air truck. Then again record the data. Once you're done please leave the station in exactly the same condition you found it when you walked into the lab. So now when we are done with taking data Let's move on to a data analysis. The first run you did was a run on the leveled track with a cart and a couple of paper clips on the other end. So to check how this graph lo looks like, just simply take this run number one, drag and drop it to a graph here. Now let's enlarge this. This looks as a straight line. If this is not a straight line, since we are plotting a position versus time, then you should adjust for the amount of paper clips and repeat the run again. Now we need to print this and save it for to answer the first question. So simply click on display here, go to settings and then uncheck this connect data points, click OK. Before printing, click here once and then another time. And now change the name to your name and the name of your partner. Go to File and then click on Print here and print two copies, one for you and another for your partner. You will use this graph on the end 
of the experiment to answer question number one. Please make sure that you write somewhere on this graph the mass of the paper clips because you're going to need them. Now let's move on to a uh, analysis of the runs for the cart and the block on the inclined track. This is where 1101 students should tune in since you guys this first part did two weeks ago. Now let's move on uh, to data analysis for the cart on the incline and the wooden block on the inclined uh, track. So the run number two here is a cart and the falling mass was 35 grams. Remember you added 30 grams and then 5 grams was the mass hanger. Let's graph this again simply by drag and drop here. Enlarge this graph. It looks like a parabola. Now go ahead and print this graph. The reason this graph looks as parabola is because you're plotting position versus time for the object that's accelerating, so you're plotting equation x is equal x0 plus v0t plus 1 half at squared. Okay, before printing graph, again, change the name of the graph here to your name and your partner name. Now, let's just for fun check how the wooden block graph looks like. It is also a parabola. Okay, so now in order to plot a velocity versus time graph, we need to linearize this equation. So first we need to find a delta x and delta t because the velocity is defined as a change in position over a period of time. To do this, simply click here on calculate. Now click on new. First, we are going to define delta x. So start typing dx equal x minus, and then under special functions here, choose last 1 comma x. Click on accept. Here, where you see variables, if it says x is equal to x, that is okay. If it doesn't say x is equal to x, if it says please define variable x, just simply take this variable x, drag and drop it here. Now under properties, the variable name is going to be dx and then units are going to be meters. Click OK, click on accept, now click new. We defined delta x, now we have to define delta t. dt is equal t minus, again choose special, last one comma and then change this x to t click accept variables t is equal to t it's okay if it is not then you just drag and drop t here on the properties right here dt for variable name for units are going to be seconds and then click ok and then click on accept now we have defined delta x and we have defined change in time. Now we need to calculate the velocity. Click on new and type v equal dx divided by dt. Click on accept. Again here for variables, if it says dx is equal to dx and dt is equal to dt, then that's okay. If it doesn't, then you have to go ahead, drag and drop dx here and then dt here. Now under properties, here where it says variable name, where it says y, write, delete that and write v for velocity and then units are meters per second. Click OK, click on accept and now you can close this. Now you can see here that we have for velocity the data sets. Now take run number two, that was your cart on the incline, bring it down to graph, enlarge this. You're going to see this little spikes here, that's because there was a magnet 
on the end of the cart so it started slowing it down so then again click here on display settings uncheck these connected data points and then click on OK again change the name here write your name and your partner's name and then print for each member of your group one graph and then by hand do the best fitting line find the slope and find the y-intercept once you're done with that now you're going to compare the slope and y-intercept done by hand and done by linear fit on the computer. Simply click here, drag and highlight the points that you want to use. Neglect these last points. Then click here on fit and then choose linear. And here you got the acceleration, that's your slope, right? And then you got y-intercept. When you write the numbers, write for instance, for this example here, the acceleration is 0 0.235 meters per second squared. Neglect this plus minus and everything after. And then y-intercept, that's going to be your initial velocity, 0 0.142 meters per second. Again, change the name of the graph here and print for each member of the group. Now proceed with the steps in your laboratory manual. Now the last set of data that's left to analyze is the run for the wooden block. Bring this to the graph. So let's enlarge this. So we're going to plot velocity versus time. For this part you don't have to do the best fit line by hand. Just select the data points. Neglect this last part here because if you remember a wooden block in, on the front had a metal part that came into contact with a magnet. So hence this squiggly points here. So highlight the points you wish to analyze then click on fit and then linear fit and here you have a slope which represents your acceleration and then you have your um, y-intercept. Again change the graph name to your name and your partner's name and print this graph for each member of your group. Once you're done with the experiment you need to close this Data Studio program without saving anything and log out of the student account. This is all for this week. Thank you.